Today I want to speak a little further about our holy saint, Saint Philomena, covering some different material from the last sermon, and in particular, one great miracle that was attributed to her. We all know about the life of Mother Teresa, the great saintly woman of the 20th century, and I think Nearly everyone in the country has probably heard of her or could identify her from her picture, a small, wrinkly old lady with a white and blue habit. I don't want to talk about St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta today. Instead, I want to talk about a Catholic woman from the 19th century who was just as big, just as famous in her own day as Mother Teresa is in ours. And that is Pauline Jaracott. This woman, who many of you have never heard of, was a major Catholic personality in the 19th century. Somebody everyone knew about in her own time, perhaps again like Mother Angelica. Pauline Jaracott founded what is now the world's largest missionary charity, the Association for the Propagation of the Faith. And she dedicated her life to raising money for the missions She produced literature promoting the missions, organised rallies across Europe and coordinated the extension of this missionary charity throughout the world. And by 1860, near the end of her life, her association had three million supporters worldwide. Even today, some of you may be familiar with the red box that people have, at least in England, in the corner of their homes to raise money for the missions. And that was her initiative. It was the first initiative of its kind. And as you might expect, Pauline was very close to the popes of the 19th century, those good and holy popes. And they had frequent audiences with her because her organisation was the largest source of funding for the church's missionary efforts in the 19th century. Imagine people saying that Vatican II brought about lay apostolate. (laughs) What a joke. In the 19th century and many centuries previously, there were great lay people seriously involved in the apostolic work of the church. And Pauline combined her fundraising efforts with a serious life of prayer. She always said the full rosary each day, went to confession every week to the famous priest, St. Jean Riviani, who was her spiritual director. And she lived a devout Catholic life, a model Catholic life as a chaste lay woman. So we're talking about a serious Catholic figure in the 19th century, a kind of Mother Teresa of her day, at least in terms of fame. And now I want to get to the miracle linking to Saint Philomena. This woman, Pauline Jaracott, had never had great health in her life. But in 1835, her condition rapidly deteriorated. After a number of examinations from doctors, a team of surgeons investigated her heart and discovered that she was afflicted with the advanced stages of heart disease. She was suffering from violent heart palpitations, constant breathlessness and terrible fatigue. The woman, who was still young at this time, desperately prayed a novena to the martyr Philomena, who although was well known for her intercession, had not yet been declared a saint. She begged Philomena to give her a healing. After doing this novena, Pauline felt called to visit Philomena's burial place at Mugnano in Naples, Italy. And Pauline lived in France and she had to be carried across the Alps in the back of a carriage. What a painful journey it was, bumping along the road. How she offered up her suffering for sinners. And in every town that she passed, the locals would pour out of their homes and they would relay message of their prayers for her and their gratitude for all her works that she was doing for the missions. In fact, on her way down to Naples in the south of Italy, her carriage necessarily stopped off in Rome. 
And while she was there in the eternal city, she almost reached the point of her death. Her great, her great and holy friend, Pope Gregory the Sixteenth, heard of her condition and came to bring her the last rites. This is a kind of well-known Catholic figure we are talking about, where the Pope comes out to give you a sick visit. And when he saw her, the Pope asked her to pray for him. He told her he felt sure she would soon reach heaven, because her, her death seemed imminent. Pauline promised that she would, but only on condition that if she was cured at the shrine of the martyr Philomena, and returned to see him on foot, he would be prepared to declare the martyr Philomena a saint of the Catholic Church. And the Holy Father replied, Yes, yes, my daughter, for that would be a miracle of the first class. As the Holy Father left the room, it's recorded that he remarked to the Italian nuns who were helping her, How ill our daughter is! She seems to me as if she has come forth from the grave. I will never see her again. She will never return. But our determined young woman pressed on, and her carriage finally reached the town of Mignano, where she was greeted by the entire population, who cried out, Do not worry, Miss Jericot. Our saint is powerful in heaven. God will be glorified through her prayers. But two days passed in that holy shrine, and absolutely nothing occurred. Pauline was carried over to the relics of St. Philomena twice, and her condition had not improved. At this point, those southern Italians, in their characteristically passionate manner, went through the streets, shouting at the top of their voices, Philomena, hear our prayers, your reputation is at stake. They even started banging on the walls of the shrine saying, Do you hear, St. Philomena? You must cure her or we will invoke you no more. It was the will of Almighty God that St. Philomena would become known as a powerful intercessor in his presence. And so the following morning, August the 10th, the feast day of St. Philomena, just as Pauline was brought to Holy Communion, In the saint shrine, the young French lady received an instantaneous cure. Suddenly, a flood of tears burst from her eyes, colour returned to her cheeks, and a healthy glow spread over her face. Her soul was filled with celestial joy. Maybe she thought she was about to leave the earth for heaven, but it was not death. No, St. Philomena had cured her. Pauline would go on to live 30 more years in the service of God and the one true Catholic Church. All the bells in Mugnano rang out in announcement of the miracle and the Italians were frantic with joy, shouting, Long live St. Philomena! Long live our dear saint! Long live the good French lady! As Pauline made her way back to Rome, large crowds gathered at the various stopping places and shouted, A miracle! A miracle! And then the great moment arrived when she presented herself before Pope Gregory. The Holy Father could not believe his eyes and his first instinct was to ask her, Is it really you, Pauline, or am I seeing an apparition of you? After he became convinced that Pauline truly had been healed by Philomena, he actually requested her to stay in Rome for a year in order for the miracle to be properly investigated. So let's pause here. Picture this in your mind. A figure as renowned in her day as Mother Teresa on the verge of death. Uh, An illness that was publicly known about, that the world was praying about. This woman receives a miraculous healing from the holy martyr Philomena on her feast day. This miracle is now known today as the great miracle of Mugnano. And it is one of the thousands of miracles attributed to the intercession of our little saint Philomena. Philomena, 
if I remind you, was a martyr for the true faith during the reign of the cruel Roman emperor Diocletian. In the course of her martyrdom, she refused to become one of the wives of the emperor, even though even her parents tried to persuade her to do so. She had made a vow to remain completely dedicated to our Lord Jesus Christ and wanted to keep it at all costs. Out of love for Jesus Christ, Saint Philomena endured being thrown into the sea with an anchor attached to her, being shot with arrows, being beaten with clubs. The martyrdom, the martyrdom of Saint Philomena brought about the conversion of many Roman soldiers who witnessed her survive these awful tortures, and it was only by beheading her at 3 p.m., the hour of our Lord's death on a Friday, that the saint finally departed from this world. Almighty God allowed Saint Philomena to remain unknown for over 1500 years before her relics were discovered once again 200 years ago. And Jesus Christ has willed to be glorified through Saint Philomena, and every time her intercession is granted, it is to his glory, and it encourages us to imitate the virtues of Saint Philomena, who remained unflinching in her personal dedication to Christ. Jesus allows the saints to hear our prayers, and he is glorified through this. May this story of Pauline Jaricot encourage you to share your needs with little Saint Philomena for personal healing, for the conversion of family members, for any breakthrough graces that you need in your life. O glorious martyr Saint Philomena, you obtain the miraculous healing of Pauline Jaricot, the great promoter of the missions. Assist me, blessed Philomena, that I too may receive your aid in my times of need, if it be for the good of my soul and for the glory of God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.